in the name of Jesus. And God, we know you've done it for all of us. What you've done for all of us, we know you'll do the same for us. And we thank you right now, Lord. And we'll say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you on this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord, everybody. Come on, we can do this. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you give him a praise for just a moment? Come on. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for his goodness. We thank God for his blessings. And we've been having a few technical difficulties and still having a few look like. But we're trying to get it all together. I think we're on Facebook now. Am I right? I will now. And uh, Sister Brian is trying to work with something to be sure that we're on Zoom as well. Yeah. Amen. But we do thank God for all that he has done. The Lord is good. Yes. Amen. Yes. God is a wonderful God. And he's worthy of all the praises. The praise team is going to come back again. Amen. To lead us in praise and worship. Say amen. Anybody know that God is worthy to be praised? From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy to be praised. I don't know if anybody out here needs to be convinced, but just the mere fact that you are alive today, that you are able to sit up in the sanctuary, ought to convince you that God is good. We invite you to stand on your feet and praise the Lord with us. We realize our limitations and that we cannot praise God for you, but we can praise God with you. So we invite you to come on, let's praise the Lord together. We want you to know that in the midst of a pandemic, the blood still works.
wife is in the ER. Jesus. And there are others who are sick this morning yeah. who need deliverance. Let's pray now. Let's pray now. God in heaven, we thank you again. We thank you for your many blessings and we thank you because you are God and there is none like you. Lord, those individuals, names that I've just called, you know God what is going on. But we trust you for the healing. We trust you for deliverance and not only them, but Lord, there's some others who are sick this morning. Bind the hand of the devil now. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood, the precious blood of the Lamb. Because the blood still works. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch thou God. And deliver. Raise these individuals up, Lord. Whatever it is, God, I know you're able. Now, Satan, we command you take your hands off now in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus against you now take your hands off now in the name of Jesus God I'm looking to you and I'm looking to hear good things good news we give you the praise we give you the glory in Jesus name amen give God a hand praise everybody
Amen. We thank God again for his blessings and his goodness. I want to say, uh, mention something that I said earlier because everybody was not here. And pastor's not picking on anyone, but we want everybody to be safe. And we want everybody to feel safe. While we're here in, in church, we must wear our masks. And then let me give instruction that we need to wear them properly. So check your mask right now. The only reason I don't have mine on because I'm speaking, but when I finish, I'm gonna put mine on back on. Check your mask, everybody, to be sure that it is covering your nose, not below your nose. Amen? Amen. But that it is covering your nose and your mouth. Amen. Uh, God has given, listen to me, when it comes to the medical science, I, I praise God for doctors and nurses. Ain't nobody saying amen. I, I praise God for doctors and nurses. Amen. amen. Because God has put them here and has given them the knowledge that they have to help us. That's what the Lord spoke to me a few months ago in the midst of this pandemic and said I love humanity so much until I have given the doctors and nurses and others the knowledge to help man. What kind of a love is that? That is an amazing love. And so uh, it's not that we put our total confidence in the medical profession because they are practicing medicine our hope and our trust is in God, but many times God heals yes. through what they do. Amen. 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 And so we do thank God for them. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Help us in the word of God. I'm going to read one verse, Proverbs 14 and 34. Do thank God for the elder Roscoe Green today and for Deacon Laws. Deacon Hall is here again with us today. Our first lady. Amen. Amen. To all the people of the Lord. Amen. You look so good being here in the house of God on today. And we yeah. appreciate you coming. And to you uh, who are not able to be with us yet, we praise God for all of you that are have joined us through Facebook and Zoom today, conference line. Yeah. We certainly appreciate yeah. you being a part of the worship service. I do believe that God is going to bring us out of this pandemic. Amen. Amen. You remember I preached a message a few months ago, and the message was patience with anticipation. Right. We have got to continue to believe and anticipate coming out of this situation. But at the same time, we must also know that it is God's time. So I have to have the patience as I look forward to his deliverance. Is that all right? Amen. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Proverbs 14 and 34, it reads, Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I want to read it again. Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. My subject for this morning, since this is Black History Month, I'd like to kind of capitalize on that a little bit. My subject today is, come back home, black man. Come back home, black man. Now, when I say black man, that includes the woman as well. All right? It includes both male and female in this message. And so... Uh, I know we're going to be dealing with, and Sister Riley talked about in Sunday school about the movies that they showed during February, and there will be limited black history programs, uh, no doubt, this month. We'll talk about those individuals that have invented some things. And let me tell you something. It's important that we celebrate Black History Month, particularly for our young people. Because they need to know that God loved the black race just as any other race. They need to know that uh, they are smart, amen, and they are intelligent like anybody else. And it is proven from the past 
through the many inventions and many things that we have in terms of technology. You, you young folk back there, hey, 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 look up here. Yeah, look at me. Thank you. Y'all probably looking down at a cell phone. Uh-huh. And the cell phone, for my understanding, was invented by a black man. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying here? And so we need to know that, that we can what? We can know that God blesses us as well. Now I'm going to deal with that a little bit more maybe late in the month, but I'm going to deal with some other issues in this message. And, and, and first of all, uh, at the beginning of a message actually is not that bad at the beginning because studies have shown that African Americans or black people are the most religious are, are the most religious group in America. That is when compared to other races in our nation. George Barnum, he, he's a famous author and one that does a lot of research. Uh, he has what's called the, the Pew Research uh, Initiative or something of that nature. Uh, he asked the question in, in one of his books, how, and, the name, and the name of his book was High Impact African American Churches. The question that he asked back in 2004 is, are you aware that black adults are more likely to be born again Christians than white adults? Did y'all hear that question? He said, are you aware that, that more than likely that, that, that black adults are more likely to be born again Christians than white adults? He goes on to say, that the top rated goal among black people, and these are grown ups, is to have a close relationship with God. While that same goal is ranked number five among the white race. And I'm not trying to put down the white race and lift up the black race, but I'm just sharing you with some information to get you to think this morning. Uh, his studies further indicated that three-fourths, that's 75%, of black men and women had a goal of being actively involved in a church, whereas less than half of all white grown-ups had the same goal. Black adults are nearly twice as likely as white adults to read the Bible during a typical week. So he's saying for black people, black people read their Bibles typically more than those of the white race. Blacks are 50% more likely than whites to strongly affirm that the Bible is totally accurate in everything it teaches. I was a little surprised at that. Uh, a more recent study done by George Burnham through Pew Research Center indicated that blacks attend church more than whites. When, when going to church at least once a week, and there was a question that was asked, and, and, and here, here are the results. When going to church at least once a week, 47% blacks went as compared to 37% whites. Those who went once or twice a month, you'll find these numbers, black 36%, whites 32%, and then the last category was those who seldom went. So when, it, when the question was asked, uh, for those of you that you don't go, you seldom go, you don't hardly go to church, uh, here are the results. Blacks, it was 17%, but look at what whites were, 33%. This trend continued along the same lines in 2018. 79% of black people claim to be Christian. 71% of white people claim to be Christian. Now, I know that those percentages seem kind of close, but let me give you a breakdown because, see, as black folks, we only make up about 12% of the population. Amen. And, and so when you kind of look at it from 
that standpoint and white America uh, makes up about 60% of the population. What that translates actually is that in terms of, of, of white America, that would mean that 40% of that race, which is equivalent to 79 million people, do not claim to be Christian. Did y'all get that? 79 million white Americans. And see, they tell you that our gospel needs to be preached to everybody. Amen. Say amen, y'all. 79 million white Americans in this country do not claim to be Christian. That's about 40%. Blacks make up 12% of America's population with only 11% of blacks who do not claim to be Christian. And that's going to total to be about 4 million. So you look at it, 79 million whites who do not claim to be Christian as opposed to 4 million blacks. So that's a huge difference. That is a, a tremendous uh, difference in those points. Somebody help me say amen. amen. So from these studies, you can clearly see that black people are more church oriented. We go to church more, we read the Bible more, we are more involved in church activities, but now I'm getting ready to turn the sharp corner on you now. Yet, there is something drastically wrong within our community. I said there's something drastically wrong in our community. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. George Barnum, who I've been quoting and getting these stats from. He also reported in his book that black grown-ups, black adults are more likely to struggle with finances than any other race. Blacks have, listen to me, y'all listen. I want my young people to listen to this. Blacks have the lowest median household incomes of all races. In 2018, the average Asian family, you know, you're talking about Japanese, Chinese, Korean, the, the, the typical Asian family median income was 87,194. For white families, it was 70,642. Hispanic families, 51,000. $450. And y'all, you know, y'all like to make fun. You talk about the Mexicans. Say, you know, they're Hispanics. They're including Hispanics. You talk about them. All of them, you say 20, 25 are living in the same house. You say when they pull up in a car, say about 15 get out the same car. And why are you laughing at them being crowded in their cars and their houses like sardines? That's kind of a joke. That, that you make. Why are you laughing at these folks? These folks are working hard Amen. to support their families and put food on the table. Amen. I took a class. I, 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 I'm preaching now just a different type of message. But I, I took a class a few, year, few years ago. You know, I'm a social studies major. I taught social studies and history for a long time. I took one dealing on race relationships. At Delta State University. All right. And in that class, I had a white professor. He was a good teacher, very good teacher. And he just broke it down too. He said, because most of the class were black, I think all of us were blacks in this night class that I took. And he said, I want to tell y'all what they're saying in the white community. You know, all this business about border control and keeping folks from crossing the border. And I do agree, there's got to be some kind of border control. I do agree there's got to be something there. They need to be fair about it. Come on, say amen. amen. But he was letting us know the people that really are fighting for border control, in many cases, they don't want it. You know why? They, and, and he just told us point blank. He, he said that in the white community, they never said to your faith, but they say black folks are lazy. Amen. Black folks don't want to work. And we need somebody that, that's willing to work and get their hands dirty and do those odd jobs. And so we want the Mexicans and Hispanics 
to come into the country for cheap labor. Amen. But you, you, you got to look at what's going on. They may come for this cheap labor, but they'll work with their hands, save their money, and then the next thing is they will open a business in your neighborhood. Amen. Y'all say amen. amen. Y'all come on and say amen. 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 The Chinese got all these nail shops. Come on now. And here you won't, won't save your money to keep your lights on. But you want to pay all that money to decorate your fingernails. And they're making money. But I didn't give the figure for a black family. The typical of the, the, the fact that median income for a black family in 2018 was $41,361. That's compared to Hispanics, which is about $10,000 more, $51,000. But then there's a big jump when you go to white Americans, 70,000. And then there's even a bigger jump when you go to Asian Americans at 87,000. What's wrong with us? With the black man? With the black woman? He goes on in the study and say, black adults are more likely to struggle with substance abuse than any other race. Yeah. We're more prone to drugs. <clears throat> Listen to me. The crack cocaine that's out there. The marijuana that's out there. Come on, y'all. He goes on to say that uh, black people often labor through feelings of loneliness and a sense of disconnection from other people, especially the black male. Mm -hmm. The black male. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say they are they also are more vulnerable. And some of y'all will get mad with this. But this is why you need to read and learn. He said that they are more vulnerable to sexual temptation. Whether that takes the form of physical temptations with a non-spouse, we call that fornication in the church, or enjoyment of pornographic materials. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I read the footnote to that particular piece, and it said that in a typical month, blacks are more than twice as likely as whites to engage in sexual relations with someone whom they are not married to. Yep. Amen. Yep. Amen. Then he went on to say that millions of blacks admit that the typical family is dysfunctional or a source of conflict rather than safety and security. So to the black family, we have more Troubles, more chaos, more fighting in our houses, in our homes, as opposed to other races. Why don't everybody lift your hands and say, Lord, help me. Come on, you say, Lord, help me. There is something wrong in our communities. Even though, listen to me, our race is the most church or an entered race in this country, we still experience the most trouble. And I'm convinced that the reason is, is because we have left our roots as a nation. Right here, right. Now notice the scripture I gave you, Proverbs 14 and 34, that says that righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I know when we read that scripture, most of the time we look at the word nation there as describing a kingdom or a country. But when you look up the terminology, when you look at the term nation, you will find that many times in the Bible, and you know that the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, the New Testament is written in Greek, you'll find out that the Hebrew word and the Greek word for nation really refers in most cases to an ethnic group rather than a country. 
So righteousness exalted a nation. We need to understand as black people, as a group of folks, that it is righteousness that exalts us. It is righteousness that lifts us up. It is righteousness that will take us to the top. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Come on and say amen again. Amen. We need to come back to our roots. Yeah. Amen. We have left our roots, or we're leaving our roots of being a church oriented. We have forsaken the biblical teachings that were passed down from one generation to the next. Yes. Amen. Yes. Many, and I want to say this, many in our race yes. Yes. today are convinced that we no longer need Jesus. Yes. That he's the white man's God. Yes. The Bible is a white man's book. The devil is alive. Because yes. I'm hoping this month through Bible study and perhaps some of the sermons that will come uh, over the course of the next few Sundays to show you that many characters of the Bible were dark-skinned people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nations that were leading the world, that were the most powerful countries in the world, were black nations. Yes. There is one scripture, and I can't remember where it is right now, but it's somewhere in First and Second Kings, when Israel was facing a war, they were facing 1,000, no, 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 I'm sorry, 1 million, 1 million Ethiopians. Ethiopians are black, y'all. Ethiopians are the same as Kush, and Kush means blackness or burnt face to indicate a darker skin. You don't hardly have a nation today that has a military with a million me. Amen. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Come on and say amen. amen. So righteousness exalted a nation. The sin is an approach to any people. I'm going to close this message in, in, hopefully in the next few minutes. But I want to make a comparison with a group of people of the Bible. Okay. It's a nation, but it's also a group of people. And, and that would be the children of Israel. In 2 Chronicles chapter 33, there's a story about a Jewish king named Manasseh. Help me say his name, Manasseh. Amen. He was a king that ruled over Judah 55 years, but he was one of the most wicked kings of the Bible. Yeah. The yeah. thing that is shocking is he came behind his daddy. Guess who his daddy was? Yes, king Hezekiah. You were right, Brother Tyler. Amen. <laughs> one of Judah's best kings. Hezekiah was a righteous king. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 32, 33 and 2, and this is speaking of Manasseh, the son, that he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. The word abomination means wicked, vile, disgusting, and morally wrong. These were the things that God had previously punished and cast the other folks out of Canaan. And now King Manasseh and the Jews were doing the same thing. What were these activities? The Bible said he built altars for the idol God, God Balaam. Balaam is simply Baal. He made groves and he worshiped the host of heaven. This is in 2 Chronicles 33. It was bad enough. Y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. It was bad enough to be worshiping the sun, the moon, and the stars. That's, 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 what, that's what the Bible refers to as the worship of heaven. Today, that would be called zodiac signs. Uh-huh. Amen. But these zodiac signs led the people into Baal worship yes. and into Ashera worship, <laughs> idolatry. And you know you got these folks now that want to be guided by the stars and they want to know what is your sign? What's your sign? Amen. And some folk read the horoscopes and they want to admit it, but they want to be guided by the 
horoscope rather than be, being guided by the Bible. Say amen, everybody. How bad was it in Manasseh's days? Because I told you he built altars to idol gods, made groves. The word groves that he made were, according to my study, were as hero pose. As hero was the goddess of fertility. And they were simply poles, and I'm going to say it the best way I can here. They were poles that they stood upright and erect in the ground, which symbolized the male organ. As here, I told you, was the goddess of fertility. She was supposed to be the, listen to this, the mistress of Baal, her son. According to their teaching, uh, as Hera was the wife of another god, and they had the baby Baal. But the folks stopped worshiping the other god, and they started worshiping Baal. So they said that as Hera was with, now with Baal, which meant that they had to be an incestuous relationship. The people felt in order to have fertile lands, fertile fields for crop production, to have fertile cattle, goats, and sheep, they felt that they must worship these, these fertility gods and goddesses such as, as Hera and Baal by committing all types of sexual acts. They believed that these acts that they did would stimulate their gods and goddesses to make their fields and animals fertile. Are y'all still listening to me? So to stimulate the idols, the people were involved, listen to me, temple prostitution, adultery, and fornication, incest. Did y'all hear what I said? They were known for the, the son, amen, being with his mom, dad with the daughter, Brothers with their sisters. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Not only that, amen, they were known for homosexuality. They were known for bestiality. A lot of people now say it's bestiality, but bestiality. That would be relationship with an animal. And if you didn't know this, right now, there are people that are trying to get laws passed that they can marry their cat, their dog. Oh, y'all weren't prepared for this way. Yeah. Elder Green, before you moved into the area, and this was in the news, I don't know how many people remember this, but up the road, Baldwin County, they found a horse over in a ditch that was still alive. He had been raped by men. That was on the news, y'all. Somebody say Amen. <laughs> The acts that I spoke of in, in the time of Manasseh were done publicly. Y'all ought to see the picture I'm drawing here. Because look at what is going on in America today. All of these sexual acts that you see publicly. You see them on television. They're on video. They're all on your internet. Yes. Parents, you need to know what your children are doing in the back room with their cell phone. Amen. You give them a cell phone to keep them busy. Amen. You better go in that back room and open that door and see what's going on in there. Amen. Somebody better say amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Don't let Johnny go back there and lock the door talking about this is my room. I got a friend when his children were growing up to show, show them that he was daddy. He took all the doors off of the bedrooms except for his bedroom. I'm the only grown up in this house. You better know what your children are doing. Y'all come on and say amen. So when I look at black America, I say, Pastor, I'll be through this by now. I'm getting it. But when I look at black America, I see some of the same thing. We have forsaken 
the teachers of our parents, yes. our ancestors called on the name of the Lord and he delivered our people. Yes, sir. When, when, when our folks were trapped in slavery, they called on the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 I, know, I know we give credit to Abraham Lincoln and to the abolitionists and other folk, but it was the Lord who brought our race out of slavery. Somebody prayed. Somebody say amen. Come on and say amen. As a matter of fact, I told you this, I think last year, around the time, a couple years ago, that in slave days, the, the, the time of slavery, white uh, owners were afraid to allow black people to have church by themselves. But many of those mothers and fathers knew that they needed to call on the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. So yes, they were still away yes, sir. in the woods at night. Yes, sir. So that they could moan yes, and groan. Yes, Somebody must have been calling for the mourning women like Jeremiah said. Yes. And to keep the slave owner from uh, finding out or disturbing him, they would take a huge black kettle and put it on a raised platform. Yes, sir. And they would get on their knees and put their heads under the kettle, the kettle. And they would cry out to the Lord. Yes. Lord, yes. deliver us. Yes. Lord, help me. Yes. Lord, we need freedom. Yes, there was groaning and moanings. And I believe that in, in, in this case, the Holy Ghost was in the moan and the groan. Yes. Have, have y'all ever been in a situation looked like you couldn't say anything? But oh, look like something just bubbling up down in your belly. Yes. And oh, all, all you could do is just moan. Oh, yes. All you could do is just groan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, 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 and guess what? Even though you didn't utter any word, God understood your utterances. Somebody tell him thank you. Why don't you tell God thank you? Our people prayed after slavery because after slavery, and this is what these young folks over here, uh, like Cajun Unique, spoke to Noah and, and, and uh, uh, my granddaughters over here, Christian. Don't start laughing too much over there. I just can't think the other granddaughter's name. He had character. I, 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 I had somebody's name in mind. But character. And I need to give y'all a quiz. And ask y'all what y'all learned in this school. Well, come on, y'all. Because after slavery was over, uh, things went, got a little bit better for black folk. But soon, they instituted the Jim Crow laws. You know, you know separate facilities. Black schools, white schools, black water fountains, white water fountains. If you had a McDonald's, you couldn't go to McDonald's. Come on and say amen. Amen. The restaurant that would serve, you went to the back door. Somebody say amen. You know, Sister Tyson just died. Miss Jane Pittman. Yes. These children don't know nothing about that story. Miss Jane Pittman yes, drinking out the water fountain. I think she's been a hundred years old. Yes, you know, sir. breaking a man the the Jim Crow law. She just died. The actress that played that role. Yes. But that's how things were. Yes, Amen. Sir. You 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 go and drink out of that white water fountain. You suddenly get a a bat upside your head. You yes, might get a rope. Round your neck. Y'all come on and say yes, amen. Yes, my, 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 my cousin, my, my cousin, the late elder David Teller, drove a car from Memphis to Clarksdale. You know, Memphis is the headquarters for the Church of God in Christ. And in one of the convocations, amen, uh, he, he drove one of the preacher's cars down to Clarksdale. And, and, and the policemen in Clarksdale, they were notorious. They If they saw an out of state tank, they just pull you over automatically. But yes. here's a black boy because he was he was really a teenager amen in this beautiful car what he doing driving this car that looked better than our car pulled him over and took him straight to jail yes, sir. took him straight to jail and his friend the, the superintendent the late superintendent frank howard they tell me he he, he told him say you can't do that said what what did you do what kind of charges uh, did you bring against him they told him shut your mouth boy and he kept at what charges 
do you have against him? They told him, say, boy, if we'd have known your daddy, his daddy, I believe, was the janitor that was working somewhere downtown. Say, we didn't know your daddy. We'd take you to the woods right now and beat you half to death. Amen. I want to I want to tell you, the Lord has brought us from a long way. Yes. I said, the Lord has brought us from a long way. Y'all yes. say amen. Yes. I know, I know, I know, I know that you got situations where where policemen have 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 yet shot our children, have killed our boys, but it's not nearly like it was then. And the reason is somebody prayed in our community. Somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. Listen, boy, I got to get out of this thing. But we've come along. Yeah. And it was by the grace of God. Keep singing songs like that because God has brought us from a mighty long way. But, but I want y'all to look at what has happened, amen, after we have gathered the blessings. What have we done to respond to God's goodness? Have we drawn closer to the Lord? Or have we back? Back the way from him. And oh, when I look at my race, I can see our race doing the same thing as King Manasseh. We're building idol altars to idol God. We're making groves and worshiping, amen, the, 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 the host of heaven. Somebody tell God, thank you. Yes, we now want to know our zodiac signs. Can't hardly read. Amen. Got a third grade education, a third grade reading level. And when I say that, I'm talking about my young folk now. Being about older people couldn't go to school like you. Amen. They wanted to go to school. Wanted to be in the classroom. But they had to go to the cotton field to make a living. And now, here you have an opportunity to, to make something out of out of yourself. Amen. Got computers in your home. Got all kind of sources. But all you want to do is play basketball and look at the stuff on Facebook. Look at the stuff on Instagram. Amen. Won't pick up a book. Won't, amen, read a newspaper. Don't know what's going on in Washington, D.C. Don't know the difference between the Democrats nor the Republicans. It's time for you to take a look at yourself. Come on and tell God thank you. We want to know the zodiac signs. Come on and shout yes. And not only do we want to know the zodiac signs with the depth of the worship of the heavens. We're doing things that are much worse in the black community. Look like we are not thinking about marriage. Have you noticed there is a decline in marriages? When was the last time you went to a wedding ceremony? You have gone to many weddings because marriage is on the decline. I was reading a story where a journalist said she went to an elementary school, talked to a classroom full of sixth grade boys, and one of the boys said, I want to be a good daddy one day. So she told this group of boys, I'm going to bring back some married couples to speak to you. But the boy objected and said, oh, no, we're not interested in the part, in that part about marriage. We only want to be good fathers. And then another boy stated that marriage is for white people. Come on and shout your ass. It's sad, but in our community, 
ages. The babies that are born, over 70% of all babies that are born today are born to unwed mothers. Come on and shout yes. Black folks are not getting married, but they're still having sex. And I thought they'd go wild. Over sex. Everything is sexy. There are no restraints in it now. You name it, the folks are doing it. Our black girls are on BET, on these other shows, and they let the rock shakers shake their behind with their little clothing. I want y'all to know that God didn't make you to become a rock shaker, but he made you. He made you to be his servant. He made you to be a worshiper of God. He made you to become an attorney, to become a doctor, to become a teacher. He made to be the owner of a business. Shout yeah! Come on and shout yeah! While our girls are shaking their hips, our boys want to be gangsters, want to be mad daddies. Come on and shout yeah! Want to be a pimp, walking, walking downtown, the streets of downtown. Town, ha, with their pants ha, falling off, ha, you can see ha, what they went through to the loom, ha, or wear some other thing. Ha, then they got the nerve to wear, ha, wear their pants down their buttocks, ha, and won't even wear clean drawers. Ha, come on and shout me head. Ha, it's sad ha, what's happening in America. Ha, I'm just telling like it is. Ha, it's sad. Ha, What's happening in America? Everything is going down. Yes, it is. You're in love with Snoop Dogg and Beyonce. I know there's some other names, but they're the names that came to my mind. These rap stars, R&B, these folks are singing nasty lyrics, and you enjoy their music, but you don't understand their music is a platform. Their music is an altar, an altar to worship idol gods. The devil is grinning. The devil is happy when they put the wrong idea in your heart. The wrong idea in your mind. Now, our young ladies are giving their bodies over to the men. Come on and shout your head. You listen to Snoop Dogg and Beyonce to get you in the mood. The boy tell you I love you and said in a deep voice, I love you, baby. And he doesn't love you, but he loves something about you. He's trying to get to the cooking. Oh, I said the cooking. He's trying to get to the cooking. And you need to know it's the devil that's trying to destroy us. It's the devil that's trying to kill the black race. Why don't you shout it? Why don't you shout it? And that's why I'm saying today, come on home, black man. Come on home, black woman. It's time. It's time. To go back to our praying ground. It's time to go back to coming to church. It's time to go back to the Bible. Read Bible verses. Read the scriptures to your children. Read the Bible to your grandchildren. That word will get in their heart. That word. We're getting that spirit. Shout ya! Why don't you tell me thank you? Why don't you tell God thank you? I got to close y'all. But come on home. 
Come on back to the ways we were taught. Come on back to the day we went to church. Have many y'all remember yesteryear? We didn't have a choice of whether we wanted to go to church or not. We were dragged to the church. If we didn't want to go there, we were made to come to Sunday school. And now pastors begging y'all to attend Sunday school, to attend Bible study. But we were made to learn scriptures. We were made to get on our knees and pray. Now we were not saved, but it put something in us. If you train a child in the way he should go, when he's old, it will not depart from it. Because I want y'all to look in my clothing. I told you my King Manasseh, a wicked king that came from a righteous father. Yes, he was a sinner. Yes, he was wicked. He did the things I told you about. I told you about. Not only did he do those things, but he believed in child sacrifice. The Bible says he made his children pass through the fire. They burned their children literally in the fire until they died. I'm looking at America. I'm looking at black America. We're sacrificing our children over sexual acts. Our girls are getting pregnant and killing their babies through abortions. We got the highest rate of iteration in America. But I want to let you know you can come back home. Because when I look at Manasseh, God gave him a warning. He would not heed. So God got tired of it and let the enemy, let an enemy nation come in at Jerusalem. There was a there was a war and Manasseh lost. The king and his men lost. And when they lost, they took Manasseh, put chains around him, probably put a hook in his nose, and took him back down into Babylon land. Here, here, here the king, the king of Judah was now in prison in a foreign land. But I'm so glad. I say I'm so glad that something was put in Manasseh when he was a young boy. Because down, down, down in prison, he cried unto the Lord. Down in prison, he had a talk with the Lord and must have told the Lord, I'm a sinner. Save me, Lord. I was wrong. Forgive me, Lord. I know that's not in the Bible, but the Bible said he prayed, he entreated the Lord. And God heard his cry. And God released him out of prison. And he went back home, back home to Jerusalem. And when he got back home, that day in Jerusalem, he declared that the God of heaven is God. He commanded the poets to worship the Lord. He commanded Judah to serve the Lord. There was a turnaround in his life. I'm trying to tell you black folks something. That if you call on Jesus, he will answer you. If you call on him, he will answer your prayer. If you call He'll give you a turnaround. He'll turn you around. He will bring you out. He will bless your home. He will bless your finances. He will make a way for you. Shout good. Shout good. God. Want to heal our race? God! Want to bring us out of our misery? God! 
He want to bless the black man. Bless the black woman. He want to bless the white man. And the white woman as well. And I'm trying to make an appeal to my black brothers and sisters. God want to heal us. God want to deliver us. God want to bring us out of pain. He wants to heal us. Everywhere it hurts. Come on and tell God thank you. Tell it, thank you. Tell it, thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Let me stop. I got to stop. Oh, my time. Get out. Let me stop. Thank you, Jesus. Well, just help us tell God thank you. Come on and just tell God thank you. Hallelujah. I brought this message to encourage my people. To encourage our community. I hope my children were listening because as a former educator, it bothers me to know that our rate of graduation is the lowest in the land. Not only lower than the white race, but Hispanic race. And one time I checked, even lower than Native Americans. The lowest. And it does not have to be that way. My prayer for Greenville and the Delta has been, Lord, change the mentality of the and more so us yeah. as black people. We need businesses to come to Greenville, yeah. oh. job opportunities. Yeah. But some of these folks are scared to come because if they come, they got to hire people who are here. Mm -hmm. And we won't do right. I'm, I'm just going to tell the truth. Break it down. We won't do right. I'm, I'm a busy man. And being the pastor, wife is teaching school. Some days we don't feel like cooking. Wanna buy something. Fast food is not the best, but sometimes I want to get it. I, I, I stopped going to McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, and Brooks, because I go there. Folks that work there, they don't care what they give us. Whether the cheese is burnt. <laughs> Get a Big Mac without the Mac. <laughs> Y'all kind of foolish stuff. <laughs> All kind of stuff. The, the other week, a few weeks ago, I think my granddaughter gets some cheese sticks on their plate. Cheese stick and no cheese. I mean, we got folk, they just don't care. Don't care, don't care about how they talk to you. And all of that. And these are our folks in these places that need a job. Yeah. Now I want you to know the other folks are looking at this. And some of them are saying, we don't need to come to Greenville. We don't need to go to the Delta. They don't know how that down there. Who are we going to have? Amen. So Lord, change the mentality. Let's stand I don't got to talk about this day. I got to end it. I, my, my plan had to be out at a certain time. I'm way, way beyond the time now. I guess I'm going to get to church because I have a lot bottled up in me. I'm not at church as much. I'm, I'm going to watch y'all. I'm going I'm 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 to be careful. And try not to hold you so long. But listen, listen. Whether you're in this sanctuary, or you are at home. I want you to examine yourself. Where do you stand in the eyes of God? Where do you stand in the eyes of God? Is God pleased with you? Is he pleased with the way you are acting? Is he pleased with your lifestyle? What you're doing? Where are you being? Is he pleased? 
you know whether or not you're truly saved. You really know, and God knows. And I want you to know that the Lord is coming again. Amen. Say amen. amen. I said the Lord is coming again. Amen. amen. But he's coming back for a blood-washed church, blood-washed people. Not only that, but folks are dying, y'all. This virus ought to make y'all think more and more about the fact that you could die. Did y'all realize that? Young people, did y'all realize you could die? Children are dying from this virus. Babies are dying. And so if you do die, are you ready to meet the Lord's face in peace? If you're not saved today, if you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, I want you to be bold. I want you to be honest. I want you to step out in the nearest aisle. And we're going to pray for you. I'm not going to come down to the altar as we traditionally have done in the past. Although, I'm going to start coming down to here and start praying with my mask on. That's coming after a while. If you're not saved today, step out of the nearest aisle. God bless you, my brother. Somebody else ought to step out. Step out. Hallelujah. Come, come up here, if you will. And you just stand right there. Just grab. Right within him that he needs prayer. Yes, that he needs help, Lord. Yes, you heard earlier this morning the things that he said. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Reveal yourself in such a way, God, that he knows that all is well. Thank you, Jesus. Touch it now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Touch his mind. Touch his heart. Set him free, Lord. Set him free, Lord. From the torments of the devil. Oh, Set him free, Lord. Oh, from the things that the enemy is trying to plant within him. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus hear our cry. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, hear our plea. Yes, Touch him now, Lord. Touch and now. help now, God. Why don't everybody Jesus. lift your hand? Brother Otis, lift your hand with your eyes closed. Yes, sir. And I want everybody to, to pray this prayer or to pray what I'm going to ask them to do. Just come and say, Lord, help me. I want y'all to really mean it. I mean just let go Because every one of us in this building Need help whether it's financial Whether it's physical uh, Whether it's spiritual I'm a Mahaya I feel his presence y'all I feel his presence y'all Lift your hand and say help me Lord Lift it with power Lord so Come on I want you to scream it out And I want y'all to scream it out because I don't want to knock that back so Come on say help me Lord Tell him you help me, Lord. I need help, Lord. I need help, Lord. I need help, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Come on, tell him, help me, Lord. Lord, I need you. I need a touch. I need a blessing. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Tell him to help. God, you hear now. You hear now. Help no. Help no. Come on, pray saying. Help no. I need help. Help no. I need your help. I need your touch. Jesus. Jesus. I call on you to touch me now. I call on you to bless me now. I call on you to work it out. Yeah! Yes, 
Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Tell everybody, tell him yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Now come on and praise him. Come on and thank him. Thank you, Jesus.
and it, it will be given to the family. Go ahead. Resolution in love and memory of Mother Geneva Porter. We are in this world for an infinite time, and with the breath of the infant begins the race to the grave, a race everyone must run. God in his infinite wisdom has seen fit to move from our midst, our beloved mother, Geneva Porter, by means of death on January 28, 2020. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of mother Geneva Porter, the officers and members of the Little of the Valley Church of God in Christ in Greenville, Mississippi, feel that it is befitting to express our sympathy to the family during this time. We commend you to him who knoweth best and will always do right. You have our sincere prayers. Whereas Mother Porter was a faithful church member, church mother, previous member of the usher board, and church secretary for numerous years without complaint. Mother Porter was an irreplaceable member, and she worked diligently in every way. Whereas the words of Jesus in John chapter 14 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Therefore, be it resolved that we share every sorrow of the bereaved family and extend to them our deepest sympathy, that we stand always ready to welcome them to the cross, for earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Be it further resolved that a copy of the resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives. Humbly submitted on February 6, 2021, Pastor Ward L. Riley joined you at Little of the Valley Church of God in Christ. We're going to miss Mother. She was a wonderful, wonderful member of this church, served this church. Some of you who have not been members as long uh, before her age and some health issues, she was more active as you would see up front more. So she did her part in this church. And listen, she was faithful unto death. Y'all hear me? When we were outside on the parking lot, practically every time we were there, her granddaughter was bringing her to church Amen. on that parking lot. Amen. I think we ought to praise God for the life of her. We're standing together. We're standing together. And certainly, let's pray for that family that the Lord will undergird and the Lord will bless the family. Lord Jesus, we thank you again. We give you praise and glory. We thank you, God, for this service. We thank you for the outpour of your spirit. We thank you for the offering that has been received. Bless it and bless every giver and every person with the heart of you. As we get ready to leave here today, God, I pray that you would take us to our homes safe and sound. Bring us back at the point of time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, hold, 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 hold. hold, hold. New dismissal. So go ahead, uh, Sister Carla Rosie, and those to my left, left, rear, left, rear, behind Sister Jones. Y'all, well, those are cheering. Go ahead, Sister Jones, if you're going out. Sister Sharon Williams, I need to talk to you before you leave.